Hello, I'm Dr. Julia Stalmokas, a staff psychologist at the Ann Arbor VA Healthcare System. I specialize in geriatrics and neuropsychology. Today I'll be presenting on how we define dementia, as well as the clinical features and natural history of primary degenerative diseases. I have no disclosures to report. Here are some key terms to review that are relevant to dementia in general, but also when discussing course of diseases. The time of dementia onset is a distinguishing characteristic. Here you'll see that there is an early onset and a late onset form, sometimes referred to as pre-senile and senile dementia, with the latter developing after the age of 65. Pre-senile dementias are those that commonly develop for the age of 65. Although not covered in depth in this presentation, there's some research to suggest that genetic abnormalities appear to be an important in some types of pre-senile dementias. Other senile dementias are, are more tightly linked to advancing age. Primary neurodegenerative disease is a term often seen in the literature, which is unique in that it's primarily related to the symptoms as opposed to some secondary impact, like a brain infection or multiple sclerosis. Base rate is the proportion of cases with the condition of interest relative to the number of cases in the population. This proportion can impact sensitivity and specificity of detection. Finally, disease course is the trajectory or progress of illness. So for example, how does the illness behave over time? As a general overview, I will first focus on the difference between the term dementia and primary degenerative diseases. Population base rates will also be discussed in the context of natural history and the course of the disease. During this presentation, I hope that you will learn how to differentiate between dementia and primary degenerative disease, learn that consideration of base rate and age of disease onset can help to differentiate neurodegenerative diseases, and learn common disease course of three neurodegenerative diseases. Dementia is a broad term, but ubiqui ubiquitous in our culture, and we often use it in our medical vocabulary. It is a broad umbrella term used to describe a variety of symptoms and decline in mental abilities that interfere with activities of daily living. It's a syndrome, not necessarily a disease. This is different from, say, Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease. There can be multiple different etiologies of dementia. For example, space occupying lesions like a subdural hematoma, infections, nutritional, metabolic, toxic etiologies like Wernicke's Korsakoff's B12 deficiency, immune like encephalitis, vascular such as those with multiple infarcts, and prion disease. Dementias may not always be permanent. In fact, there are several that are reversible with treatment, some referred to as dementia mimics. These include things like delirium and other treatable medical disorders. There are various clinical and research definitions of dementia. Here from our Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM-5, provides a description of neurocognitive disorders. This replaces the previous DSM-4 of dementia, delirium, amnestic, and other cognitive disorders. As part of this definition, First, we have to determine evidence of significant cognitive decline in one or more cognitive domains, such as complex attention, executive function, learning and memory, language, perceptual motor skills, social cognition. These are different from the DSM-4 that had aspects specific for memory, aphasia, and apraxia, for instance. And this decline is a decline from a previous level of performance. And we assess this by impairment on standardized neuropsychological testing. But the DSM-5 also considers another quantified clinical assessment. It's important to note that the standardized neuropsychological testing compares scores with appropriate norms, norms that consider age, education, and cultural background. It also evaluates the contribution of self, informant, and clinician observations. So there's an addition of decline based on self-report because those who are high functioning might be missed. They might perform in the average range on objective testing but might be self-reporting decline. 
And if you just rely on self-report, you may also miss those with poor insight or those who fail to notice symptoms. And there are some that might be overly sensitive and they might be worried well. So it's important to consider multiple sources of information. It's also important to consider that this cognitive impairment impairs activities of daily living. And the level of impairment will determine severity, as noted on the next slide. The cognitive impairment is not attributed to delirium or another medical disorder, such as depression, schizophrenia. You can also specify various etiologies. For example, if the cognitive decline is from related to Alzheimer's disease, frontal temporal lobar degeneration, FTD, multiple etiologies, Parkinson's disease. You can also specify if there's a behavioral disturbance, such as when, in, when symptoms also present with psychosis or agitation. You can specify severity, as mentioned earlier. For a major neurocognitive disorder, the DSM-5 suggests that we look for two or more standard deviations below the norm, and for mild, likely one to two standard deviations below the norm. Then there's also the consideration of probable versus possible. And this can vary according to etiology. So for Alzheimer's disease, someone could be classified as probable Alzheimer's disease if the individual has genetic testing or there's clear evidence of decline in memory. It's steadily progressive and there's gradual decline and there's no evidence of mixed etiology, like another systemic disease or condition. Otherwise, it's considered possible. The National Alzheimer's Coordinating Center also defines dementia. There's an all-cause dementia definition as the following, that the subject has cognitive or behavioral neuropsychiatric symptoms that interfere with the ability to function at work or usual activities. There's a decline from previous levels of functioning. It's not explained by delirium or a major psychiatric disorder. The cognitive impairment is detected and diagnosed by a combination of history taking and objective cognitive assessment. There is impairment in one or more domains, and some of this you'll see varies from the DSM-5 definition. Um, they include domains including acquire and remembering new information, reasoning, and handling of complex tasks, poor judgment, visuospatial abilities, language function, changes in personality, behavior, comportment, with the latter being somewhat different than the social cognition that was described in the DSM-5. There's also a specifier that in the event of a single domain impairment, such as with behavior and behavioral variant, FTD, the subject must not also fulfill criteria for MCI. Primary degenerative disease represents a decline in cognition, behavior, and function that is greater than what occurs during the normal aging process. And the progressive deterioration, deterioration of brain tissue is also tightly linked to behavior. So for instance, Within Alzheimer's disease, research has indicated that there's a predictable order of events that involve neurofibrillary tangles that first appear in the transenterrhinal region of the perirhinal cortex and eventually move to the neocortex in the final stages. To look at this a bit further, we can look at the cholinergic hypothesis. Here, there's a marked loss of neurons within two specific basal forebrain structures the nucleus basalis of Maynard, and the locus ceruleus. These losses result in a decrease in cholinergic and noradrenergic neurotransmitters. The location and pattern of nerve cell dysfunction and death leads to a cluster of symptoms and behaviors. So for Alzheimer's disease, the neuronal loss in the neocortex, strikingly in the temporal, temporal lobes and brainstem nuclei. This can lead to disconnection from other areas like frontal lobes that contribute to difficulties with divided attention or set shifting. There are several primary degenerative diseases, such as dementia of Alzheimer's type, frontal temporal dementia, FTD, Lewy body dementia, and primary tauopathies, which is a class of neurodegenerative diseases associated with pathological aggregation of tau protein. This includes progressive supranuclear palsy, and cortical basal degeneration. It's important to remember that there's no real definitive diagnosis, such as Alzheimer's disease, which is confirmed on autopsy. 
It's otherwise indicated as possible or probable. Moving to population base rates and disease course of degenerative diseases, we must talk about prevalence and incidence. Prevalence is the proportion of the population, usually estimated through sampling, with a particular characteristic or disease over the course of a specified time frame. Incidence is the number of new onset cases of a symptom or disorder over a specified time frame. Population base rates are critical for diagnostic decision making. And one reason for this is that many of the presenting symptoms can overlap across diseases. Age is one differentiating factor as are base rates. For instance, the vast majority of neurodegenerative diseases have an onset later in life. This data can be useful in distinguishing disorders with overlapping symptoms. Also, some are more common than others and the course of neurodegenerative diseases varies across subtypes, and this variation can be quite helpful for differential diagnosis. Next, I'd like to present results from a recent paper. It's currently in press with colleagues in Michigan. It's a review of age of onset and base rates of common neurodegenerative diseases. This is a graph of various adult psychiatric neurodegenerative disorders based on average age of onset. This is important because the symptoms that can be psychiatric in nature can vary depending on age as a point compared to neurodegenerative diseases that can happen later in life. Now this box highlights the start of the primary neurodegenerative diseases at about you know, the late 40s, as you see here. Age of onset can impact disease course with some conditions, again, having an earlier onset. Sometimes this has been correlated with leading to faster progression of disease. Predicting the course is, is difficult, but the presence of other factors like medical factors, vascular burden, in addition to age of onset, cognitive reserve, presence of other neurological symptoms can all impact the course and progression of the disease. I'd like to now highlight three diseases in particular. For this presentation, I would like to focus on FTD, Lewy body dementia, and Alzheimer's disease. As you can see here from this graph, with Alzheimer's disease, the onset of symptoms is usually in the eighth and ninth decade of life. FTD, the symptoms commonly present in the sixth decade of life. And with Lewy body dementia, usually in the late 50s and 60s. This is an important differentiating factor. Prior to discussing these three neurodegenerative diseases in more detail, it's important to understand that many neurodegenerative changes that occur, occur well begin clinical manifestation of the disease. So for example, in Alzheimer's disease, it's well accepted that there are certain changes that happen before we can observe certain behavioral and cognitive changes that can interfere with normal functioning. Because at that point in time, the criteria for Alzheimer's disease could be met and prior to that, there could be many other changes. So it's important to consider that although age of onset of the disorder could reflect symptom expression or behavioral changes, there, these are likely chance that many other changes are happening prior to this diagnosis. And research is beginning to understand the importance and influence of biomarkers early in the disease stages well before that symptom expression. I'd like to point out this in-between area between preclinical and dementia, MCI, mild cognitive impairments is often referred to. The prevalence of mild cognitive impairment increases with age. At least 10% of those individuals between 70 to 79 years of age are diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment. And about 10 to 15% of patients with MCI progress to dementia annually. So the diagnosis of MCI is a risk for subsequent development of dementia, but not all will go on to develop dementia. And we are learning more and more about the progression from MCI to dementia and the contribution of various biomarkers in its detection. The first neurodegenerative disease that I would like to focus on is the most common, Alzheimer's disease. It's marked by a slow, insidious onset and gradual decline. So insidious, in fact, that many families are unaware of the problem until it affects functioning. 
work-related problems are shown. It's very gradual and unexpected at times. Early on, it's marked by cell loss in the hippocampus and adjacent regions in the temporal lobe. The process can also invade prefrontal and parietal areas. Memory decline can be marked by rapid forgetting. Language problems, apraxia, and social withdrawal is common. The disease duration ranges from 8 to 12 years. And the prevalence is about 10.3% of people over age 65, and this increases with age. Almost 30% of those 90 years and older are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Like I mentioned earlier, it is the most prevalent cause of dementia and accounts for about 60 to 80% of cases. Frontal temporal dementia has an early insidious onset. Early on, there's atrophy concentrated in the frontal and temporal cortices that has been found. And so parietal and occipital lobes have been shown to be spared. There's also some research to suggest the cortical atrophy can occur asymmetrically. The extent of hippocampal and amygdala involvement varies from person to person. Personality changes are common. Social inhibitions, poor judgment, there's also language deficits and executive dysfunction. And the disease duration ranges from about seven to nine years. And the prevalence of this is about 0.015 to 0.022%. It's important to note that it's the fourth most common dementia, five to 9% of all dementias. But you see though that it's the first or second most common for those under 65. So again, highlighting the import, important point of age of onset is important differential diagnosis of dementias. Dementia with Lewy bodies has a mean age of onset in the late 50s and early 60s. Early on, the course is marked by, at times, atrophy concentrated in the frontal and temporal cortices. There's accumulation of alpha-synuclein protein and a diffuse distribution has been found, and marked by fluctuation in mental status, orientation, Parkinsonianism, and recurrent visual hallucinations. And all three features are actually often present within a year or two of the dementia onset. The disease duration ranges from six to nine years. And the prevalence is about 0.36% among those age 65. It's the second most common dementia. 20% of all dementias include Lewy body dementia. So to close, dementia is a broad term used to describe a syndrome. The primary neurodegenerative diseases are distinguished by various differences in disease course and pathophysiology. Peak age of onset and base rate of disease occurrence can improve diagnostic decision making. So for example, FTD having the youngest age of onset and Alzheimer's disease with the oldest mean age of onset. And here is a list of references for my presentation. And thank you very much.